Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Luyi. I'm a postdoc working in the Sogon University in Korea now. So it's glad to join the workshop uh, a hypotension headache at the University of Southampton. And today I will introduce my research, releasing the prison hypotension with the PROCA theory. Human beings always looking forward to understanding our universe. 600 years ago, Isaac Newton thinks the universe should be stable and write down his Newton's second law of motion. But this equation can explain our solar system very well at that time. When the Albert Einstein was young, he also followed Newton's idea and thinks the universe should be stable. In his first paper about the general relativity theory in 1917, Einstein write down his Einstein equation. This equation will lead to a dynamic universe naturally. In order to keep the stable universe, he also add another cosmological constant term in his Einstein equation. Twelve years later, Edwin Hubble discovered the universe is expanding, and this uh, discovery make both of Newton and Einstein make a mistake. Hubble discovered the residual velocity of the galaxy is proportional to the distance for the observer, and the coefficient h0 is the Hubble constant. You can see 1 over h0 equal to the uh, expanding rate of our universe. Einstein accepted this expanding universe later, and he said the cosmological constant term he added in the Einstein equation is the really biggest blender in his life. Another person, Limiter, also discovered the expanding universe and even have two years earlier than the Hubble. The truth is, when Hubble discovered the limiter is doing the same topic with him, he used his power to make the editor delete limiter's sentences about the expanding universe. So Adam Hubble is the first person to discover the expanding universe in the English world. With better observation in the last 20 years, we have known the universe is not only expanding, but also an accelerated expanding one. As we have seen, the expanding rate of our universe is always the most important topic in cosmology. And now we have to face the two questions. How fast is the universe expanding now? And what's the value of Hubble parameter? The value of Hubble parameter from Eden Hubble's result is of around 500, and the observational result from Limiter is around 600. Both of the early observations have very large error bar, and with more and more accurate observation, the modern result is around 70 now. Before 2011, the observation from CMB and the supernova almost gave the same result of Hubble parameter. At that time, people looking forward, the two observations will give the same accurate result in the future time. But, whoops, two years later, the two observations have more and more different results. Nowadays, the two results have more than 4.4 sigma tension. This is the Hubble tension problem. We can see the table result of the two measurements. Uh, this is a result from supernova. It gives the H0 around the 73. And this is a result from CMB. It can give the result of H0 equal to 67. The precision of cosmological measurements is about 1%. And all of these measurements have become so accurate and uh, the uh, uncertainty have no overlap, which means such a large de deception cannot be explained by the uh, systematic errors of the H0 experiment. This is the H0 result given by the local observation from supernova. This re result is from high redshift 
a CMB measurement. So the different measurements at high and low redshift give incomparable results. The developing history of our universe like a broken bridge, which seems a hint to new physics beyond the cosmological standard model. We have seen the H0 tension from CMB and the supernova results. Um, in the next, I will introduce the H0 result from other independent measurements. And I will introduce how to solve the H0 tension in early universe and how, how to do the solving in the local universe. Uh, the last, I will introduce our model, the generalized Broca theory to release the H0 tension. Another model independent way to get H0 is from Lansing, named Holikov. When the light crosses the galaxy come to Earth, there is a time delay from different distance. So there is also an important way to help us understand the H0. The result of H0 in Holikov is around 73. And this H0 result from strong Lansing is almost the same to the result from a supernova. Okay, is there possible to have a mistake in the CMB measurement? If we want to consider this, we need to focus on the moving sound horizon at the recombination time. Uh, and this uh, moving sound horizon will be given by the theta star. And the theta star is a uh, measurement value. And uh, this value has been tested very well in a uh, Planck measurement. The arrow, the, preci the precision just have 0.03%. Okay, if we want to have a larger value of H0 in the early universe, we need to have a smaller value of uh, chi star. And if we have a smaller value of chi star, and uh, the seed star is fixed from measurement, so we will have a smaller value of Rs. If we have a smaller value of Rs, we will have a shorter developing, hi developing history from the Big Bang to the recombination. Depending on the same reason, the result from BAO always stand in the same team with CMB. This line is uh, lambda CDM's value based on Planck's measurement. And we can see uh, uh, the BO's result always same with CMB. And uh, the result from supernova of the H0 uh, is totally different from them. What if there is a mistake from supernova's result? As we all know, if we want to get the H0 from supernovae, uh, we need to consider the geometry of our universe and then get the distance of Cepheid. And later, uh, depending on the Cepheid, we can know the distance of supernovae. What if the first step have a mistake? The Windy Friedman used the tip of red giant branch to replace the cephid, and the result we can see is almost equal to uh, 69.8. But this value also have 1.2 sigma tension with CMB and also have 1.7 sigma tension with the supernova's result. So it doesn't too much helpful to release the uh, H0 tension. What if the second step have a mistake? Mm, there is also research if we consider the different age of the supernova, we will also get the mm, different value of H0, around 70. If we want to release the H0 tension in a cosmological model, we have the several five ways. Uh, one is to consider a different equation state of dark energy. Uh, this can help uh, to release the tension, not too much. And the second way is to consider another relativistic species, such as additional neutrino or additional uh, dark radiation. This also have effect to 
uh, release this tension. And the next way is to consider a non-zero special curvature. This result it will uh, show us a closed universe and uh, a dynamic reality massive dark matter will also help to release this problem. And the last way is the early dark energy. It can uh, effective release the H0 tension. In the next, we will introduce the generalized Broca theory and uh, to reduce the H0 tension with this model. The last is summary and outlook. In the standard model of particle physics and cosmology, the most studied field are spin zero, one over two, one and two, correspond to the scalar, spinner, vector, and tensor field, uh, respectively. What is Broca? Broca is a massive spin one field. For the spin one case, there are Maxwell field and Broca field. For the massless Maxwell field, there are two transverse. Uh, there are only two transverse polarization. And for the Broca field, there are not only two uh, transverse polarization, but also a longitudinal propagation uh, due to the breaking U1 gauge invariance. So the generalized Broca theory is a good way to make a U1 breaking vector field as a dark energy candidate. So the most simplest uh, Broca action is given by this part of G2 and G3 is given by this one, and the P2 and P3 are free parameter. Now we introduce the background evolution of generalized Broca theory. The vector field A mu with a time-dependent temporary component, a temporary component phi t is given by this, and this phi have a relationship with Hubble parameter. We can also get the evolution of dark energy and the equation of set as this, uh, and we will introduce the S is a free parameter, and the S equals to P2 over P. The P is the order of uh, potential, and the, this is a P2. There is a very interesting developing history of the equation state of dark energy. Uh, we also written here, and the S is a free parameter. If the S back to zero, this model will back to lambda CDM. And if this S equal to one, this model will be considered as the vector Galileo model. So uh, the S, we will do the global fitting to give value in this work. Uh, but this developing history of WDE, we can see in the more early universe, it have a smaller value. And this very helpful to uh, add the expanding rate in the early universe. So this is the reason it makes the uh, H0 tension released. We did the observational constraints on the generalized Broca theory. We use a cos MC class and the monopassion program to do the global fitting for that. And for the data side, we select the uh, Planck 2018 and the BAO data, supernova data, especially we add the uh, RIS prior for the Hubble constant. This result is only based on the uh, CMB and the risk prior. We can see uh, the free parameter S is almost equal to 0 0.3. Uh, it, uh, it didn't back to lambda CDM and didn't move to the Galileo. Uh, so the H0 parameter in the generalized proof theory is almost equal to 73 and can be distinguished with the result from lambda CDM. Now we show the table result of k square effective for each data site. We can see the generalized program theory have a smaller k square in every uh, kind of CMB measurement and have a smaller k square for the race prayer. So the totally k square is much smaller than the lambda CDM. It means the generalized program theory is more closer to the uh, CMB and HST observation. Now we can see the fitting result based on all data sites, uh, based on uh, H0, 
CNBBO and uh, supernova, we can see the S is also uh, fitted very well. And uh, the result of H0 is equal to 770 and uh, can also can be distinguished more than two sigma than the lambda CDMs result. In this one, we can see the uh, chi square effective for individual experiment. And uh, the generalized broadcast theory also have a smaller value in the every CMB measurement, but have a larger chi square than lambda CDM in the BAO and the supernova data. In the totally, this theory have a smaller chi square than the lambda CDM with one more free parameter. Now we focus on the H0 result for uh, PROCA theory and the lambda CDM. This one is the uh, HST observational result, and the green one is the fitting result of PROCA theory. We can see that have no tension with the HST result and can be distinguished very well with the lambda CDM's global fitting result. And this result is based on all data side. We can see the green one of Procast theory uh, also more closer to the HST result and much better than lambda CDM. The generalized Procast model is able to make H0 measurement uh, comfortable at two sigma with MCMC result. Now we show the conclusion. Generalized Procast theory in Planck plus CMD B dataset has no tension uh, between CNB and the H0 result, even match the holy call result at 73. In all the data side, generalized program theory can reduce the tension below two sigma. And the program theory can be distinguished with the lambda CDM with the free parameter S uh, larger than zero. Uh, and in the Planck plus HST data site, S equal to 0 0.3. In all data sites, S equal to 0 0.17. For the uh, chi square, we have uh, a smaller chi square than London CDM. And the difference of chi square is equal to 22 in uh, CMB plus HST. And uh, the difference chi square equal to 7 in all the data side. Now is the summary and outlook. H0 problem is very important in cosmology, uh, maybe point new physics beyond the lambda CDM. We have uh, provided the generalized Broca theory to solve the H0 problem and found that our model have a better fit result to the current data size than lambda CDM. We hope the new data from Lansing and the new math to address the supernova data uh, give us a new insight on the H0 problem. Thank you very much for your attention.